Hello, and welcome to Nextstar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Visual Force Workbook. This video covers Chapter 2, Adding Attributes and Using Autosuggest. In our first video, we created a Hello World page in Visual Force. That page is a good example of some of the common elements of all Visual Force pages. For example, all Visual Force pages start and end with an Apex page element. Also, all Visual Force pages, for the most part, must adhere to well formed XML structure. These are important to keep in mind for a new Visual Force developer. So the first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is change some of the attributes of the Hello World page. In the Apex page element at the top, we're going to add sidebar equals false. Now we're going to go ahead and save it. As you can see, the sidebar along the side of the page has vanished. I'm going to take this one step further show header equals false as well. When we save that, it has removed the entire frame of the page, both sidebar and header, both gone. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the header back. I'll click save. Now you may have noticed through all those changes the Visual Force page editor suggests elements and values to you as you type. This is very useful when developing Visual Force projects. Now that we've gotten familiar with adding attributes, we're going to add a few new components to our Visual Force page. There are a few dozen built-in components, and you can install and build your own to extend beyond those. In the component reference, you can browse and research all the available components in your Salesforce environment. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Apex page block. When you click on a given element, it will give you a description of what it does and documentation of all the attributes and how you can manipulate it. If you click on the Usage tab, it will give you an example of how to use this in your Visual Force page. So let's go ahead and add a few components. I am going to start with page block. And I'm going to title it Oops. block type. So you can see that. And underneath the page block, I'm going to create page block section. Let's give the section its own title. I'm going to go ahead and close my page block since I typoed that the first time. All right, so I've gone ahead and added a page block and a page block section, both with titles and a little bit of content. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we'll see what it looks like. All right. So this is what your final page should look like. As you can see, we've added a couple new components. And now we're going to move on to the next section. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate nested components. So right now we have a page block and a single page block section. I'm going to go ahead and add another page block section inside that page block. Go ahead and give this one a different title. Oops. I 
All right. Now, one thing to make note of anytime you nest components is to make sure you clearly close one component before starting another, unless you intend to have them nested. Now, we have both of these block sections nested under this page block, and that's correct. But make sure you close components that you intend to close before starting new ones. Let me go ahead and save that. Now, as you can see, we've got two page block sections under the the, uh, the parent page block and that's gonna wrap it up for this video in our next video we'll cover chapter 3 understanding simple variables and formulas thank you for joining us for more great content click to follow us on Google Plus thank you